Rebecca Nunkaleleko, thank you so much for joining us. Now, I've been lucky enough to attend a World Cup abroad. Uh, now, for South Africans, traveling abroad is expensive. But during a, a big event like the World Cup, any place, the prices go even further up. How many South Africans are we expecting to make these trips to go and see Banyana Banyana, the Proteas and the Springboks? You know, a lot of South Africans are very interested in traveling abroad, especially when there's a sporting event and one of our teams is actually participating. Uh, so we're expecting a lot of South Africans to be going to, to the rugby in England and ov obviously uh, France also, which is the Women's World Cup, uh, in Japan later in the year. So, yeah, there's a lot of people who are meaning to go there. So if you're saying that you know of many people are going, mm -hmm. uh, are you saying that these are people who have the means financially just, just to decide and book a package and I'm going? Or are we looking at more ordinary South Africans who've planned long in advance, have saved up and have slowly tried to put the money together to be able to afford a trip mm -hmm. when the RAND is doing very badly against the euro and, and the pound? Yeah. Look, the dates have been there and planned for a long time. So people can obviously plan in advance and, and you know, they make sure that uh, they've paid their accommodation in, in advance because it's quite expensive at this time, especially when there's a big event and there's less accommodation. So they, they book their flights in advance and they pay for, for, you know, for their accommodation and then they just save money to get there and just enjoy. Um, would you say that it is cheaper as a South African to go for a package that includes your accommodation, your flights, and as well as match tickets? Mm -hmm. Or uh, is it sometimes easy, easier to cut corners if you're doing your own individual planning? I would say it's easier to cut corners because, you know, if you, if you don't take a package, then you can sort of book at, at random time. So you can book your flights first, then take some time, save more money, and book your accommodation, and then uh, book your tickets. Or you can book your tickets first, but some people even go there without tickets. And then when they get there, they just buy tickets from, you know, people who are selling them outside of the street. Uh, now, I, I just saw this week the World Cup, the Rugby World Cup in Japan is mm -hmm. about to release a few extra tickets um, later this month for people who want to buy match day tickets. But the word on the street is South Africans shouldn't even consider going to Japan because it's so expensive, even more so than traveling in Europe. Is that true or is it just a, an urban myth? You know, Japan is the, one of the most expensive countries in the world. It's in the top 10. So it will be a bit more expensive than your other countries. But, you know, I mean, who doesn't want to go to Japan? <laughs> because so, you can really go and experience a completely oh yes. different culture. Oh, yes, completely different culture. But, you know, it's really great to, to, to see other cultures and see how people live and obviously attend a, a, an event um, in another country. If I can just put you on the spot, if you think of an average trip to Japan, um, what kind of money are you looking for your flight and your accommodation, let's say, for an eight-day trip? I would say have at least 50000 on you? Yes, darling. <laughs> because you remember, you still go And to... that's not staying in luxurious places? No, that's your, your, that's your four-star three-star, four-star kind of uh, places. And obviously because you also have to connect to get to Japan from South Africa, there's no direct flight to Japan. So it actually, although it's longer to get there, but it also costs a bit more to get there whenever you have to connect and there's no direct flight. And once so, you're in Japan, Once you're in Japan, like? the cost of living in Japan is quite high. Uh, as you know, uh, the GDP there is in the top five in the world. Indeed. So uh, just living there and just eating and buying stuff and just going out is quite expensive. And taking local transport, they've got those amazing bullet trains and You know, that. and you want to experience everything. So and travel where to... the spring box are going. Yes. So you need to put yes. that yeah. all together. And yet, based on that, you're saying there are a number of rugby be fans oh, yes, that are going. Of course. I mean, um, there's a lot of, you see now, there's a lot of middle class mm -hmm. which is traveling a lot more to countries like that. So obviously they have disposable income to, to travel. Mm -hmm. And it also helped them to just, you know, be away, relax, mm -hmm. you, you know, do whatever you want instead of being at work. <laughs> well, we're going to leave it there for now. That was educational Afro-culture travel director Nkuleleko Magi Africa. Thank you so much for your insight.